Okay, welcome back everyone. This is Silicon Angles The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by co-host Stu Miniman of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is Tim Yeaton, Senior Vice President of the Infrastructure Business Group at Red Hat. Welcome to The Cube. Thanks, John. I'm glad to be here. So we've been geeking out all week, and you know, first of all, I'm in my element because I love talking about software operating systems and innovation. It's kind of like the perfect storm to have these conversations. Um, and you know, Red Hat is, done some amazing work, but now it's even more compelling because now the open source stage has been set. The foundation is, is not only secure as a tier one <laughs> infrastructure opportunity, with scale out open source hardware, with open compute and commodity just exploding, it's horizontally disrupting everything. Absolutely. And infrastructure as a service is stable at, at some level now where cloud, you starting to see that bridge being built and it's happening in real time. So I want to get your take, that's your, that's your role. Right. Where are we with this? What's your take on uh, where Red Hat is now in that construction of taking that infrastructure to hyperscale, large scale, with all the benefits of DevOps and application developers getting them the, the mojo that they need to be faster, smarter, and better software? Sure, well, you know, one of the things that you'll hear us talk about a lot is our focus on enabling customers to, to build and deploy hybrid clouds. And in, in our mind, hybrid clouds are, are structured in such a way that you define the workloads and you have a natural relationship between those workloads and the deployment model. So you know, you're going to have customers who will continue to have you know, single server bare metal deployments, you know, uh, classic virtualization, all the way out through uh, private and public clouds. And what we want to do first and foremost is enable that model to be natural. You know, pick the, put the deployment model that best fits the workloads and then help you evolve to make whatever of those more efficient. It's really difficult. I mean, I've been in the enterprise business for a very long time, going back to my early days at HP and IBM. And you know, back in the old days, it was easy. You buy a system, you have an environment, you buy it, you deploy it, you pay for it, you amortize it, and everything's happy. You got an IT department. But now, you have you as the, uh, the supplier side have to think about all the multitude of use cases. That's right. It's very challenging. So how do you take, how do you get your arms around that as, as a company mentally? One and two. What are you guys doing from a, from a technology standpoint to give that flexibility? so that whatever you workload, you mentioned workloads, there's no one workload anymore. Right. You got virtualization, that's a nice little bonus, shot in the arm, so to speak. Right. Is so, containers that magic? Well, it's, it's a great question. So, so I think at a, at a philosophical level, level you know, first and foremost, we embrace diversity. So we know that customers' environments are complex, uh, and what, what we see our role is doing is making that complexity as manageable as possible. So from the standpoint of our infrastructure strategy, there's really sort of four tenants to it. Uh, the first is you know, taking those community-driven innovative technologies like OpenStack and making them you know, you know, mission critical and consumable for enterprises, you know, what Red Hat's historically known for, make the, the core platform you know, uh, uh, bulletproof. Um, what, what you heard a lot about uh, this week was what we're also doing at the application enablement layer, including containerization of apps. And the goal there is to create a, a simple application development and deployment model that can transcend any one of those deployment styles, all the way from single server bare metal to uh, public cloud. So we simplify the development and deployment of applications. Uh, the third key uh, uh, unique element is our storage offering. And that gives a single name Uh, where its data is located. It's, it's, it's conversing you know, to a single namespace, could be inside, outside, doesn't matter where the application lives, it understands the storage. And that really Log adds- Log or object independent? Yeah, and, and, and we're adding all of that you know, consistent with the open stack okay. framework. Okay. And then the fourth thing is providing a single management framework, in our, in our case, uh, cloud forms, that it's you know, classic virtualization, open stack environments, inside or outside the firewall as well as being able to manage not just Red Hat deployed infrastructure, but also you know, VMware as it's installed or uh, Microsoft as it's installed. So those pieces really form the unique elements of our open hybrid cloud vision. And even if you think about the management framework, how complex that is. You said inside, outside, virtual, non-virtual, I mean cloud. <laughs> And then you, you know, the deployment on the app enablement, bare metal to cloud, I mean, I mean, automation and orchestration seem to be the hot button in all this. Absolutely. Where does that fit in? What are you guys, where are we with that? On a, on a, on a um, 
advancement basis. So, 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 of course, a lot of that is enabled directly with the OpenStack framework. And as I mentioned, in our case, CloudForms uh, brings all those kinds of capabilities, both provisioning, orchestration, monitoring, billing, and the like, to that you know, diverse heterogeneous environment so you can have a single view of all your resources, understand how they're performing, and how they're, they're, you, can, you can migrate them across, you know, whether it's, again, Red Hat infrastructure or others as well. Talk about containers. Obviously, Docker was on. We had the founder Solomon. It's great to talk to founders because um, it's not like the HBO special uh, <laughs> and what it's like in Silicon Valley. It's he's the real deal. Um, built a company, started it from scratch, grew it, and now he's funded, super funded. Jerry Chen, great Cube alumni, friend of ours. Um, but containers, the timing is right. I mean, it's not a new concept. That's it's, right. Is that was this one of the things where timing is everything? Well, I think I think. Certainly there's an element to that, but I think um, what they've done is two important things. One is taken full advantage of the existing container concepts, but also enabled a very elegant model for you know, uh, you know, integrating and, and you know, composing applications that are using multiple Docker images. And I think what you're going to see is an index built up of pre-built Docker images. It's going to really facilitate you know, the, 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 the construction of composite applications in a way that's much easier than it's existed before. So I think it's, it's great timing because uh, it's, a, it's a perfect model for unwrapping applications into the cloud and also some technical innovation that we're collaborating on uh, that, that actually make the applications that much more robust as well. So what's your take on the overall um operating system of the future. You know, software-defined data center is all the rage right now, depending on who you talk. It's certainly a marketing angle for, uh, for VMware and others uh, in the past. Um, but that's, the software-centric business model is something that's your heritage right. at Red Hat. It's, it's like, okay, how do you guys play in all that? You guys see that as just new territory, existing territory, opportunity? We, we see it as an extension of where we've been with customers for a long time. So, you know, we we, we started obviously with RHEL, you know, back back in the day, um, you know, made that you know the, the standard for Linux deployments. You know, likewise have moved on to virtualization. So we see it as a continuum, and our job is to enable customers to move forward on the cloud maturity curve, if you will. But it doesn't mean necessarily get them all the way to you know, public cloud with everything they're going to do, that's just not going to happen. It's again, you know, get them to a natural place where workloads are deployed on the infrastructure that makes the most sense, but give them the flexibility to change their minds if they got it wrong or if they want to evolve. We had uh, Ranga on earlier talking about storage, and I liked his quote, he said, we have the triple play of on cloud, software defined, compute, network, and storage. Right. Um, what's your take on, on, on that trend? I mean, software defined networking has been well defined and Nasir really set the tone at that when they were bought by VMware two years ago. But now you got storage and compute going that way. Wait, what does that mean? What does software defined storage and compute mean? Well I think I think it's 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 a recognition that innovation is happening in software in many ways faster than hardware. And it's easier to you know, accelerate those innovations on industry standard platforms. So I think there's a level of inevitability around you know software defined star that you know, we're obviously in the business of enabling and accelerating, so in each of those cases, we want to be a, a core enabler. We're going to work upstream to help, you know, e even if we're not intending to productize things ourselves. So we're active in all of those communities and helping to you know, push the innovation, do what we can. So what's your take on the, I want to get your personal, uh, professional opinion on this. It's more of like, go back in time and let's look forward, kind of like we'll bounce back and forth. So all the people who have made a lot of money in the old way of infrastructure, Stack and rack and servers, you mentioned bare metal. You know, Dell was even on here. They were you know, saying, hey, you know, we understand the world's shifting. HP is here, um, IBM. I mean, they, you know, you met Microsoft on the software side. You know, you have some people who have some entrenched business models, right. okay? That have to evolve fast. What is the key thing that they have to evolve into? Not just those guys, but just in general from a macro landscape standpoint. What is this? What's this mega trend going on? Can you describe it from an infrastructure standpoint? Whether it's converged, you get flash, you got all kinds of stuff going on. What is going on and what needs to be, what's the evolution model look like? Well, from, from a business model perspective, you know, you, you're certainly seeing uh, uh, companies wanting to consume and pay for only what they need and have great flexibility in doing that. And a lot of the traditional business models, even going back to perpetual licensing, sort of worked completely uh, uh, in the antithesis of that. So you know, Red Hat's been a subscription you know, a company from day one. I like to say 
it, it, it keeps us honest because our customers have the ability to vote with their feet every 365 days. And so it, it, it keeps us you know, uh, aggressive in terms of participating in communities to drive innovation and, and be disciplined at the same time about how we bring that in and productize it. I think it's a model we've... You've got to have the kind of support in the life cycle. Absolutely. I mean, that's critical, right? I mean, you, you multi-years, decades. Right. I mean, you look at, you look at a, a technology like OpenStack today. You have the cadence of innovation in the upstream every six months. Incredible new technologies. And you know, we see our job as pulling from that, you know, building a mission critical solution, ensure that applications are certified to that, and then provide a very long support life. And, and our strategy, of course, there is, you know, we'll continue to extend the support life as the technology continues to mature. Do you guys worry that you're not doing enough for OpenStack? Well, we're doing everything we can. You know, I think we, we remain the number one uh, committer. But I, I will say, you know, Brian, I'm not trying to suggest you're not. I know yeah. you guys are number one. But but I mean, OpenStack is the deal right now. Right? Yes. It's all about OpenStack, right? right? I mean, this is what everyone's talking about. Um, IBM put a billion dollars down, kind of set the Jello. I call the Jello analogy. Put it in the refrigerator. At some point, it forms. And right. You're you're happy, right? You know, they did a billion dollars, made that Jello, made that happen. You guys, in a way, are the new IBM, right? You could, but your influence not just money; it's everything else. So, you're seeing that new OpenStack yeah. needs right. some, you know. <laughs> well, so we, so we, so, we, so, so we like to think of ourselves as being, you know, the Red Hat of OpenStack. You know, much like we're the Red Hat of Linux. Yeah, as Stu said earlier. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, you know, th that's exactly our view, and we bring a lot of the same philosophy to bear. Now, it's a much more complex environment and, it, and a lot of the pieces are moving very quickly. So you know, my, my comment about you know, feeling like maybe we're not doing it enough, it's, it's not for want of trying, it's because there's so much opportunity in so many areas where you can see the paths to innovation. So you know, from that we decide, you know, what do we bring uniquely to the table? Yeah. You know, we put our, our talent you know, uh, you know, to bear there but also try to be catalysts of those communities to ensure that you know, yeah. we're getting the world control. Yeah, yeah. Tim, to that point, you know, there's certain areas where I look at where it's great that Red Hat's contributed to the open source community, but it's your ecosystem that might benefit Absolutely. from more. So, for example, you guys are very active in the Open Daylight Initiative, yes. uh, and some of the other networking pieces that are going on, and it's companies like you know, Cisco, Arista, Juniper that'll probably see you know, more dollars than Red Hat would. How, how do you guys balance that out? So, so that's a really great point. You know, I think, I, 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 already said uh, on a couple occasions previously that you know, I think uh, uh, hybrid clouds are going to be built, not bought. Um, even though we're uh, you know, bringing the technology to bear and making it you know, consumable, the reality is there's a lot that customers are going to wrap around that core. So it's incumbent upon us to actually extend our ecosystem, both of uh, technology providers, ISVs, and solution partners, cloud providers, you know, SIs, because in the end, we together are going to build you know, these infrastructures and then evolve them for customers. So I think you know, as a company, we're, we've always been you know, a good partner, uh, uh, attempted to, and you know, we're, we're putting that on steroids now. And we're actually investing quite aggressively to expand the infrastructure that we have to engage partners and, and work with them. So, you know, looking at OpenStack, you know, some of the comparisons are, you know, to what VMware did, you know, in the last decade. And one of the things that VMware did really well, you know, they said, their, their partner system, partner ecosystem helped build that. For every dollar you spend on VMware, you're getting you know, 15, 20 or more dollars back to the partners. Do you see that same opportunity with OpenStack? Oh, absolutely. So if, if you just look at the markets that Red Hat's playing in these days, um, it's something on a scale of $60 billion. We're not going to be a $60 billion company anytime soon. We'd like to be, but the reality is, we see it as our job to build a business that's enabling others to fully capitalize on that $60 billion market particularly the, the cloud elements of it. Yeah, um, so I happened to chat with you last week, right. and I want to bring up a question uh, that, that I asked you then, which is, if you look at, you know, at the show, Cisco's here for the first time. If you told most of us in networking five years ago that Cisco would be at a keynote at the Red Hat Summit, we would have fallen over and not believed <laughs> it. You've got companies like Microsoft embracing open source, Cisco's here, even Oracle, uh, you know, has everything to do with MySQL and other things there. Um, are you guys welcoming everybody to the table? Is it good to see uh, everybody finally understanding that open source is where the future is going? What, what, what's your take yeah, on that? Yeah, so I think, so back to the, the point about the $60 billion market, the sooner a vendor community recognizes that this is going to be the predominant innovation model, the faster we can go reach those customers. And as we talked uh, last week as well, I think the other dynamic that may not be uh, apparent yet, but that we see playing out very quickly is the mind shift that's happening among IT executives. You know, they look at the, the pace of innovation that's happening in these open source communities and ecosystems, 
Um, they recognize that they're betting large portions of their next generation IT fabric on open source technologies, um, not just cloud, but like big data, mobility. And they start to ask themselves, how could we get those kind of benefits at the application level? So I think you're going to see over time, customers start to think about how to use open source technologies and methods within their development organizations, another uh, um, area of expertise that we have. And I think it's, it's all sort of you know, turning into a perfect storm of your customer adoption and a virtuous cycle. So, so let me ask you a little bit of a loaded question. You okay. know, when I, when I look at the storage world, said storage administrators are rather inefficient. If you look at the networking world, you know, many have criticized that, that they're, they're a little bit uh, you know, be behind do, doing too many manual efforts and haven't really automated. You know, wh what do you think is the state of the you know, Linux administrator and uh, you know, the, the, the gap between what Linux is doing and the, the rest of infrastructure? Well, as uh, Brian Stevens pointed out in his keynote this morning, you know, historically in sort of classic deployment models, the, the ratio of, of uh, sysadmins to you know, servers measured in some, some form or another, you know, has, hasn't changed much materially. And, and we see you know, all those dimensions that I had talked about before, the four tenets of our uh, open hybrid cloud strategy as starting to change that. And I think, again, where so much of this innovation is happening around Linux and open source, this is going to be the catalyst for changing the efficiency model around, around system and cloud management. So I want to ask you about OpenStack, okay? So, or, or make a step back. So being an SVP of Red Hat, publicly held company, um, you can't really say a lot of things publicly about you know, numbers and stuff, because you know, disclosures right. and all the lawyers will be watching you. But I want to give you a chance to, to address the audience and, and, and share something that uh, might be itching you. Like what, and then the question is this, what is out there that you, you'd like to correct about Red Hat, a misperception, or just an awareness something that they may, someone might not know about Red Hat, that you feel like, you know, I just wish I had a microphone and just tell people, you know, we're not doing that, we're doing that. I want to give you a chance to share something on a personal level or with Red Hat that sure. you'd like to get the word out of. Yeah, I, I think the first thing is, um, we haven't fully educated customers on the breadth of capabilities we have infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. You know, you're going to talk to Craig here in a minute. I think he probably echoed the same point. We have an incredibly robust set of capabilities, all leveraging the open source model, and the pace of innovation in all of those threads has been accelerating. So I, I think that's one, you know, helping customers understand the breadth of capability we can bring to bear. And shipping product, shipping absolutely, code. Absolutely, and then Not the, vapor, that, like that's real. That's exactly right. And production deployments, you know, of a scale that, you know, are thousands and thousands of cores in the case of OpenStack, which actually gets me to the second point, and that is um, the, the notion that somehow OpenStack's not ready for production deployment. It's still early days, but when we take a branch, we make it bulletproof. Uh, and in fact, just one quick anecdote, um, uh, one, one of the fellows that just joined my team is a fellow named uh, Als Alessandro Perilli. Uh, he was previously the, the private cloud analyst at Gartner, and he wrote a seminal blog back in November about uh, this, the, the sort of the general lack of uh, maturity in OpenStack as it comes from the community. Uh, but in point of fact, that's that's natural, right? The, the community is there to innovate. It's companies like Red Hat whose job it is to turn it into the mission critical platform. The amazing thing about Alessandro is, you know, he wrote that blog. It was it was a really I think I remember topic. that blog. It was it was very well yeah. uh, uh, read, but you know he. Yeah, and he would tell you this himself. He thinks the one company that is already doing it and can do more of it is Red Hat. So he's come here, he's leading our open hybrid cloud program. So So first thing is, hey, we have more stuff than you think. Get the word out, hey, right. don't, you know, don't listen to the FUD too. OpenStack is ready when we ship something. Right. right. Even though that it's the bridge that's being built. Right. You don't need to have the whole bridge to yeah. execute with it. So so basically, you yeah. know, to, to, yeah, to yeah. summarize your summary, um, you know, so I'm from Boston, right? So we got a lot yeah, more. Bottom line, be right. We got a lot more stuff <laughs> than people know, and what we've got is wicked good. Okay, <laughs> wicked pissa, as That's they would right. say. Um, so, so I'm from that area too. I can say that. <laughs> Goof on myself, and I have 14 years. Um, final point: competition. I mean, what do you say to all the fud out there? Like, hey, you know, go to a cocktail party. Hey, you guys are really getting your ass handed to you by Cloud Foundry. Yeah, well, oh, I think. Yeah, I mean, certainly. Whether uh, that's true or not, but you know. Well, I, th I think you know, there's, there's always buzz in the industry, and I think what matters is you know, what, what real customers are taking into production. And yeah. so, you know, we're, you know, I think there's little question in customers' minds that 
you know, hybrid clouds are the likely deployment model, ultimately. Uh, OpenStack is going to be the, the, the primary alternative for building out the private cloud portion of that. And then everything else is going to sort itself out. I mean, one thing that I, I admire about Red Hat uh, uh, for many years is its adaptability and its, its willingness to complement whatever yeah. customers have deployed. Yeah, and we see other approaches. We see Amazon certainly cover their events, IBM's events, HP events, and um, you know, EMC and Pivotal, those guys, and uh, you guys and others. Everyone has a different approach, but one thing that the people who are successful, they understand that the open source community yeah. game is about respecting the cathedrals that were built and not bombing them for Absolutely. personal gain. Right. And <laughs> yeah. The, you, when you see marketing tactics that come from the old school of you know blocking and tackling and you know giving someone an elbow when they're not looking, it comes back to bite. I mean, well, do it, you it, agree? I mean, that's kind of like uh, it's the norms uh, out there. No, no question. And I think that's that's part of the learning that our industry's got to go through. The funny thing about Red Hat. Um, is we have almost the exact opposite challenge. We have so many developers that live in the upstream, they often forget that you know, the, 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 the business guys back at the ranch have to figure out how to you know, make money at this too. And the, but, but that's the right balance. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you want them out there innovating and then we'll figure out how to make, you know, uh, yeah. make, you know. It's a nice, it's a balance like the lava lamp. It flows back yeah, and forth yeah, absolutely. the equity absolutely. And, the, and the love flows back and forth. Final question, I know we got a break, is OpenStack's coming up. We'll have theCUBE there for multiple days, broadcasting live in Atlanta. What do, you, what do you expect to see there in terms of you know, just concepts? What's going to be the, the mannequin that's got the, the, the jacket, the scarf? What do you expect to see hanging, on, I, hanging around the, the messaging and the concepts? I think, I think you're going to see a couple things. I think you'll see lots of real customers talking about their experiences going into production. I think, I mean, I can tell you from our perspective, we have a wave of, of announcements of things that we're doing in that context, and I suspect you're going to see it. To me, it's likely that from, from Hong Kong in the fall to Atlanta in the spring, it's going to look like you know, years of maturation, you know, relatively speaking. And, and final question around OpenShift. Some people say uh, there's been some FUD around, oh, OpenShift doesn't know tracks, it's slowing down, and you know, other approaches. What do you say to that? Well, I think, so first of all, that's, that's not the, the factual case, and, and, and Craig can talk about that too, but I think we, we see you know, a continuum of infrastructure as a service to platform as a service, and we want those, those to be a natural flow. So uh, you know, the gear deep work that they're doing on OpenShift to enable the, the, the Docker containerized applications, it's all in that same continuum, just up at the application layer. Tim, it's been a wicked good segment here <laughs> on theCUBE. Really appreciate you coming on. Um, this is theCUBE live at the Red Hat in San Francisco. Uh, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next Great. guest after Thanks, this John. short break. Thanks, John.